so here it is. Let's just kind of go over it piece by piece, I guess. Uh, this is kind of the most obvious section. It's a keyboard. This is what the body is made out of. I ripped out the QWERTY keyboard and um, replaced it with just actually a generic M-Audio keyboard that I kind of hacked up. And then on the top, there's uh, a display with some buttons and a rotary encoder with some more buttons and two power LEDs and the Commodore 64 logo inverted so that when it's held in keytar position, um, it's the correct orientation. Going around uh, to the bottom, this is where um, most of the I.O. is. Um, this is an expression pedal input. These are three control voltage inputs for interfacing with modular synthesizers. This is a, um, a toggle that toggles between keyboard MIDI uh, when it's down when it's up, um, it'll go into external mode. Two power switches. Why are there two? I don't know, because, because it looks cool. Left audio out, right audio out. Left filter in, right filter in. You can route external audio through the SIDS filters. And then we have power. If you get a close look at power, you can see that it's, it's actually a kind of uh, Molex connector that goes to a custom uh, power brick that I built. Here's the power brick stowed away in its its little chamber underneath my desk. And finally on this side there's one of the two MIDI out jacks. Um, this jack is MIDI out for the microcontroller. This is useful when doing, for instance, patch dumps of, of presets that you might save. Looking at the back, there's uh, my amazing logo, Gianna 64 Stereo SID Synthesizer. For those of you who don't know, the Great Gianna Sisters was uh, this like weird Mario knockoff or like Mario clone um, that came out in the 80s for the Commodore 64. <laughs> I don't think very many people know about it in the U.S. It was, it was primarily a PAL game. Uh, moving along, there's a ribbon cable that runs up the length here. Um, this ribbon cable actually doesn't do anything. I was inspired by the um, external ribbon cables on the Ghostbusters proton packs. So it's actually a kind of design trope to make the thing look more hacked than it, than it really is. And then there's two MIDI ports. One is MIDI out for the keyboard. So you can play external um, instruments, MIDI instruments, with the keytar. And the other is the MIDI input, which allows the keytar to be played from, you know, some other controller or from a computer, for instance. Up on the neck, we have three uh, decals that show Gianna's transformation from kind of normal mode into some sort of um, crazy punk rocker. This is like the equivalent of, of when Mario gets big. And then right at the very end, there's a um, force-sensitive resistor, which I use as a, a sustain button, basically. What's on the top? Uh, not much is on the top. I took a key from the Commodore 64's keyboard to have a little Commodore logo. That's basically all there is there. And coming back around to the front, we have the modulation matrix slash display, a bunch of knobs, buttons, and controls. Um, there's a ribbon controller here. Um, this is for doing pitch bends primarily, although it, it is also um, fr freely assignable to various parameters. Coming down here, there's another decal. MOS 6581 refers to the model number of the SID chips that I used. A lot of people like to use 8580s, um, but I actually prefer the sound of the 6581s. Uh, I, you know, I don't know why. I guess probably because I, I grew up with it. And it's, it's the sound that I remember from my childhood. And then underneath that are um, the date codes. These, this is the date code for the left chip, this is the date code for the right chip, and this means that that chip was manufactured in the 48th week of 1983. By the way, I wasn't even alive yet in 1983.